Hi, I'm Tim and you're watching Mr. Tim Tech on YouTube. In this video, we're going to show you how to lock down and secure your Grandstream PBX. So if you own a Grandstream UCM series or the Grandstream GCC series, which are quite new, then this video is for you. So keep watching and I'll show you how to secure your Grandstream PBX. Thanks for watching this video. Now, just before we start and go into my PC behind me there, um, this video is going to be about locking down and securing, well, securing actually your Grandstream PBX. Now, already Grandstream do a great job of securing their PBXs from the factory. So a lot of the settings are already defaulted in there. However, we can do a few more settings which we can enable or disable or change to further secure your PBX. Now in this video I just want to point out that my Grandstream UCM 6300A is not used as a router but it's actually connected to a firewall so it's behind a firewall which is already locked down and another thing the UCM and all my IP SIP telephones, which are all Grandstream by the way, and the UCM, are all in their own VLAN. So they're all in a separate VLAN called PBX. So what I did was set up a separate VLAN and put my telephones and the UCM, which is the PBX running the telephones, in their own VLAN. And as I said, they're behind a firewall. And also as well, that any users cannot access this PBX remotely. So there's no remote telephones. They're all running locally on the network. So just wanted to point that out before we get into the settings. So what we'll do is go into my PC behind me now. Um, we'll take a look and we'll secure our PBX down a little bit further than what it comes from the factory. So we'll do that now. I've logged in to my UCM and we're currently at the dashboard. Now I'm using a UCM 6300A model and as I said I'm at the dashboard so before we do and make any changes we must first create a backup. Now to do this you go into the left hand side menu click maintenance and then select backup. Then from the backup screen which you'll see here just click backup Choose storage location, so leave this as local. A file name, you can change that if you so wish, but at the moment it's set to the name backup, the date and the time that the backup is being prepared. So once you've created the file name or left the file name as it is, just click the backup button and wait a couple of minutes and it will prepare the backup and you will now see we've got local backups and in there we've got the name of our backup .tar file the date and the time it was created and the size of the backup now what i would recommend doing is downloading the backup and then deleting it from the ucm because at the moment it's stored in the ucm's storage space on the device itself so i'd recommend removing that so that you have as much free space as possible on your UCM internally. So to download the backup under the options button, click the first icon. So it's a little symbol with the arrow facing down. Then you will get a pop-up window asking you where to save it on your local PC. So just click save and wait for the file to be downloaded. And that only takes a couple of seconds. So once you've created the backup and saved it somewhere safe on another device, for example, your local PC, or if you want, you can then copy it later to a NAS drive or a server, for example, I would recommend deleting the backup from the UCM. So just click the red trash icon to delete it and click the OK button to confirm deletion. And as you can see, we've now got zero local backups in there. So once you've done the backup, we can then proceed to go back to the dashboard. So we'll go back to the dashboard to start again. And then we'll, what we'll do is go in and set up our UCM so that we have some enhanced security options in it. So we'll get right to that now. 
Now the first thing what we're going to do, what we're going to change is disable redirect from port 80. So to do this what you need to do is go into system settings at the left hand side then from system settings select HTTP server. Once into HTTP server we're going to disable the redirect from port 80. Now what this will do once you disable it is on the address bar you will need to type in the actual port number along with the IP address in future to be able to access your UCM web interface. So that's all that that does so that only you know the port number so only you have access to it so it will take others for example many guesses before they can guess what port number is running on so if they just type in the IP address on its own and try to access your UCM or your GCC then it will mean that it won't work without the actual port number so for redirect from port 80 we'll select this to and change it to disabled then once you've done that for the next option in this same page is for port number we're going to change the port number from the standard 8089 which is the default port number we're going to change it to for example 9090 so give it its own unique port number so once you've done that you can then click on save but please make a note of the port number otherwise you won't be able to access it in future so make a note of the port number of course you can use any port you like provided it's not already a port being used by the UCM itself but it should actually tell you that when you try and change the port number so this is saying that the configuration changes require the web server to reload to take effect and will log you out proceed and we'll click OK. Data is saved successfully, reloading and what we'll need to do to access our UCM now is we get redirected. So we're getting redirected because we're actually already changing the settings. So what we'll do is put in our username and password again and log back in to our UCM. So for emergency calls we'll just ignore that for the time being and then for system status we'll go back to the dashboard so now that we've done those two options we'll just check to make sure that they are set and okay so we'll go to system settings again http server and as you can see we've now got disable against redirect from port 80 and we've changed the port number to 9090 so now that we've done that what we're going to do is change the factory default password now make sure that you don't use the factory default password make sure that you always change it to a long and secure password so if you haven't already changed your factory default password then i would recommend doing this and to do this what you need to do is go into maintenance so select maintenance which if we hide the system settings you'll see that we've got maintenance at the left hand side so select maintenance and then select login settings then to change the password what you need to do on the change password is tick the change password box then you will get the option to enter new password and re-enter a new password so you have to enter the password twice in those two boxes there so once you've done that you would click save and then at the top you might get an apply changes button at the top if you do then you'll need to click this and it will then log you out and then you'll have to log back in with your new password but I've already changed the password so I don't need to do this so we'll just cancel that so for the next option make sure that you enable strong passwords so to do this this is by the way to, for your telephones so it's for your telephones connecting to the pbx so we make sure that they're strong passwords and also at the same time we'll make sure that we use and enable random passwords so to do these two options what we'll do is select pbx settings then we'll select general settings and scroll down and you will see we've got enable strong passwords and enable random passwords this should already be ticked 
by default so this option and this option should already be ticked by default from the factory so if they are you could leave those as they are so you don't need to change anything there then the next option is we're going to enable fail to ban now to do this option we need to go into system settings so we bring up the system settings menu then we go to security settings then from the top option we select fail to ban then what we do is for basic protection we enable SIP defense then in the maximum retries we can change this leave this as five actually and the maximum retry duration set this to 60 seconds which means that if anyone tries to access our system five or more times within the space of one minute so 60 seconds they will get blacklisted and you'll see them in the blacklist down at the bottom here below so if they do and you know who the blacklist person is or the IP address or you recognize it then you can actually go and unban them in there so we'll leave those two options at maximum retries of five and maximum retry duration to 60 seconds then what we're going to do is also enable login attack defense so again it's a similar sort of option so we'll leave the maximum retries of five and the maximum retry duration as 60 seconds now this 60 seconds applies to both the sit defense option and also the login attack defense option so that's those two options changed so once you've done that click save then once you've done that you can click apply changes at the top and then just wait for the interface to reload and configuration has been reloaded as you can see at the top here so now that we've done those settings we'll go in and set the user login timeout and retry attempts so to do this we need to select maintenance so collapse the system settings select maintenance and then from maintenance go into login settings then go into login security at the top and select the user login timeout and change this to for example 30 minutes and the maximum login attempts you can change this if you want to say three for example is probably a better number than five and the user ban period change this to 60 minutes so what this will do is so for the user logging a timeout if the interface is being logged in so if you're logged into the interface for example and you don't interact with the interface so if I say I leave this as it is go away for 30 minutes it will automatically log you out after 30 minutes of no activity and also for the maximum number of login attempts if someone tries to log in to the UCM web interface here three or more times to be precise with the wrong user name or password it will ban them for a period of 60 minutes before they're allowed to log back in however if you want to override this option say for a specific PC that just you are using then what you can do is add the IP address of that machine to the login whitelist at the bottom here however I'll just leave it as it is at the moment so for the user login timeout set that to 30 minutes maximum number of login attempts three and user ban period for 60 minutes so once you've done that click save data is saved successfully and you don't need to apply changes at the top now the next option we're going to do is enable ping defense so to do this we need to select system settings so from system settings so collapse maintenance first system settings then from system settings we'll go into security settings then from the typical firewall settings button which you'll see here in the middle of the page click this and for ping defense enabled you should have a tick in that box and for SIN flood defense enable 
you should also have a tick in that box. These should be enabled by default. So there should be a tick in those two boxes by default from the factory. As those two options are already enabled by default, ping, defe ping defense enable and sin flood defense enable, we can just click save on those two options with the ticks in the boxes. Ping of death defense is not required as we already have ping defense enabled there. So if you enable both options, it will automatically disable ping of death because ping defense is already enabled. Hopefully that makes sense. So once you've got the two ticks in the top two boxes there, click save. And then at the top, we'll click apply changes. And as you can see, it's reloading. Configuration has been reloaded. Now for the final option, we're going into SSH access and make sure that SSH access is unticked. So make sure that that's disabled so that you don't have access to the secure shell. If you ever do, then you can always enable it by ticking that box. And then once you've finished using the shell, then you can always untick it to disable it. So we'll just click save there and nothing to save as we've already have that disabled. So I believe also that is disabled from the factory. So now once you've done all those settings, what we're going to do is create a backup. So to do this, we'll collapse system settings. Then we're going to maintenance and select backup. And then from the screen for backup, what we'll do is click backup, leave the file name as it is, choose the storage location. So we'll leave that as local and we'll just click the backup button and wait a minute or two for it to create the backup. And as you can see, we've now got a backup created here with the name, the date and the size of the backup. And what we can do is I recommend downloading the backup file and storing it somewhere else and then deleting it from the UCM because at the moment it's internally stored in the UCM. So it's using up storage space in the UCM. So I recommend downloading it. And to do this, you click under options, you click the little vertical bracket symbol with the arrow facing down. And then you'll get a pop-up window asking you where you want to save it. So just save it on your PC. And then once you've done that, you can click the trash bin to delete that backup. And as you can see, the backup has now disappeared from the list of local backups here. So that means it's deleted. And of course we have it saved on our local PC. So that's it for this video and hope you liked it. Hope you found it useful in enhancing the security of your UCM or your GCC series of PBXs. Uh, thanks for watching this video. More videos coming soon. Please feel free to leave a comment in the description should you wish. Or if you have any other improvements on enhancing the security, if you're already a Grandstream PBX user, then please also leave them down in the comments as they might be useful to uh, viewers and other people thinking of using a Grandstream PBX. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.